All right, so the first optimization problem, the difference of two numbers is 20. I want to find two numbers where when I subtract them, I get 20. And when I subtract them and I get 20, but if I multiply them, I want to get the smallest possible product that you can think of. So I'm going to call my numbers X and Y for convenience. So I know that when I subtract them, I get 20. And what I want to happen is when I multiply them, I get the smallest possible, I get a minimum, the smallest possible product. This could be negative. And in fact, it's going to be. I, I, I know that for a fact, that the product will end up being a negative number. It's not, you know, you could get a product of zero. You can pick 20 for X and zero for Y, and that product would be zero. But that's not the smallest you can get. You can get even smaller than that. Now, this is your, I, I call it the max equation. In the class notes, I called it the M equation. It's either a max or a min, but I always put just a big S M because max and min start with M. So it works. This is the dude I need to take the derivative of. The problem is, first of all, this is a product. <laughs> You'd have to use the product rule. Second of all, if you took the derivative of Y with respect to X, you would get a dy dx. This completely screws me in so many ways. I cannot keep this Y here. This is why you have the top equation. I am going to solve the top equation for y or x and replace it as long as you take the derivative with the same letter. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to solve for x because it's easier, because all I have to do is add y to the other side. So I'm going to, I'm going to do it over here. I'm going to add y, right? I'm going to do plus y, and then I'll write it. I'm going to do plus y, plus y, and I'm going to get that x is 20 plus y, just to show you that you don't have to use x, as long as it's the same letter and you take the derivative of it. So I'm going to take the derivative with respect to y because I'm going to have all y's. I'm going to get rid of this x. This x has to go. I'm going to replace it with 20 plus y. I take the top one. I solve it for either letter. It's just easier to solve it for x because if you solve it for y, you have to subtract x to that side and then divide by this negative here. I think it's more complicated to solve it for y, okay? So it's easier to solve it for x. So take the x that was there and put 20 plus y there. If you wanna write y plus 20, fine, I don't care, it's the same thing. So again, this is my max equation or min equation. I'm gonna distribute the y, right? So you're gonna get 20y plus y squared, right? Hop the fence, say hello to everybody. So this, this is my min equation or max equation. I ran my line right through it. There we go. Yay. Now, what do I do with this? To find the max or min, you take the first derivative and you set it equal to zero. That's where the tangent line would have a slope of zero. It would be a line going left and right, a horizontal line. So I'm going to take the derivative of this. The derivative of 20y is 20. The derivative of y squared is 2y. I'm going to take the derivative, which is m prime, right? This is m, this is m prime, take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and then solve it. Subtract 20. I'm getting close to the bottom and I'm worried it's gonna, I'm gonna run out of space. I can still see it. Divide by two. So you get y is negative 10. And you're like, whoa, whoopee. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Well, that's half my answer. I know that y now is negative 10, so now where do you go? Do you go here? <laughs> what, what good does putting negative 10 over here do? I don't know what the hell this is, and I don't know. I have two unknowns. I don't know this and this. I need to go back to the top one where I had x minus y equals 20 and put negative 10 in for y. Now, be careful. Don't, don't make the remedial math mistake. All right? Replace the y with negative 10. Now figure it out. Negative, negative is positive. This means that x has to be 10, right? Subtract 10. Do it like you're five. So that's your pair. The difference of these numbers, if you do 10, take away negative 10, you get 20. If you multiply them together, what's the product? 10 times negative 10 is negative 100, right? This is your product. There is no pair of numbers you can find that will give you a smaller product, no matter, no matter what you pick. 
for X and Y. If you subtract them and make 20, your product is gonna be bigger than this. This is the smallest product that you can make. All right, so again, I wrote my two equations. I solved the top one for one of the letters and put it in the max equation or the M equation, multiplied it out, took my derivative, set the derivative equal to zero, solved. That only gives me half of my answer. Then I got to go back and get the other answer. All right. All right. So the second problem, you're going to make a box from a square piece of cardboard that's 12 feet wide, right? So it's going to be 12 by 12 because it's a square. You're going to cut out the corners and you're going to fold up the sides. So basically, you would, you're going to cut the corners out like this. You're cutting the same amount from the corners. And then, you know, you would fold up the sides. And this is, this is what you would do. You would cut out all the corners. I mean, it, this is fucking stupid, but this is, this is, this is the concept. This is what they do. They cut the corners out and they fold up the sides and they make a box. So visual aid aside, so here's, here's my box, all right? I'm gonna cut the corners out. I know that my box is 12 by 12. All the sides are 12, it's a square. It says square, square. So I'm gonna cut the edges the corners off and I'm going to fold up what's left and it, you know, it, it'll make a box with an open top. It actually should say open top, <laughs> but I didn't write that. So the, the question is how much do you chop off so that you can make the biggest box possible? I mean, look, I could chop off one inch from here and one inch from there. I can chop off two inches. I could chop off three. I can't chop off six and six because then I wouldn't have a side left. But you could chop off, say, five and five, and you'd be left with, you know, two by two and fold it all up. So the question is, how much do you chop off? So the piece that you're going to chop off, you call X, right? That's the piece you're going to remove. You're going to take it from that corner, and you're going to take it from that corner. Now, how do you find the volume of a box? The volume of a box is the length times the width times the height. This, this is, this is the volume of a box, right? The, the room you're in right now is a box. <laughs> it may not be a square, but you know, the volume of the room you're in, the space you occupy is length, width, height. Now, I need all of these to have the same letter. Now, conveniently, <laughs> I'm removing the same amount from each corner. So the question is, you know, here, here's this side, right? I just have this side. I'm going to chop off X from that side. And I'm going to chop off X from that side. So the question is, like, let's, let's say I chopped off one and I chopped off one. That side would be, you'd lose one here, which would make it 11. And you'd lose another one here, which would make that side 10. So if I took off an inch from the left and an inch from the right, or feet, whatever, I would be left with 10. So, you know, if this was a two and this was a two, I'd lose two on that side and two on that side, which would make it an eight. So the length is gonna be 12, take away X twice, you take away two X's. Now, thank God this is a square because that means I do the same thing to the width. The length and the width, I'm going to take, they all start off at 12, and I'm going to take away x once, and then I'm going to take away x a second time. So I take away 2x. So the width is also 12, take away 2x. Now the magic question is what the height is. This is what I chopped out. This is x, right? It's 2 inches, 3 inches. So if I fold it up, then this height, as was yelled out, is x. The height, when you fold it up, the height is going to be x. So that's x. This is, this is going to take me like a half hour to edit this now. So that's, that's the volume now. The length is 12, take away x twice. The width is the same because it's a square. And the height is the piece that you're going to fold upward. 
to make the box. So that's X. Now, guess what you need to do? I mean, I know I wrote V there, but th this is actually your max equation. This is it. You only have one. Sometimes you only get one formula. Sometimes you get two. In this particular problem, you only got one formula. So I have to actually multiply this entire thing out, <laughs> take the derivative of it, set it equal to zero, and solve it. So it's not, it's not going to be fun, but I got to do it. So I'm going to foil it all out. 12 and 12 is 144. I'm going to do this fast. In the middle, you get negative 24x. At the end, you get negative 24x. So you get negative 48x. And then in the front, you have negative 2, negative 2. That's positive 4x squared. And then you got to multiply that whole thing by the x that's sitting out there waiting for it. So now, hopefully, you're not going to have a heart attack that I'm going to do this. I want to write this in the correct order. I'm going to distribute this x. I'm going to get x third, x squared, x. I want this first. I don't want it at the end. So I'm going to move it in the front. So multiply it by x, and you get 4x to the third. Take away 48x squared plus 144x. Positive, right? Positive, negative, positive. Make sure you get it right. X squared times X is X cubed. X times X, X squared, and then X times 144. Now I have to take the derivative. And here's where I'm going to run out of room. Hopefully I can still see it. You got to take the derivative of this. This is, this is how you find the max or the min. 12X squared, take away, I believe it's 96, plus 144. And then you set that equal to zero. Take the derivative, set it equal to zero. I have to get rid of my picture now. I think I, I'll, I should be able to fit it over here without having to <laughs> erase the whole thing. Here is the good thing. This doesn't happen on all of them. I got really lucky in the one I created. I got very lucky. This could be very nasty. 12, 96, and 144 are all divisible by 12. So I'm going to take the 12 and factor it out into the front. Thank God. So let's see. I'm left with x squared. I'm pretty sure, right? It's 8. Yes. 12 times 8 is 96. And then 144 divided by 12 is 12. It's very important. If these have it, I mean, look at the thing you're factoring. You don't have a calculator. What are you going to do? Use the quadratic formula on this? You can't. You got to make sure you factor out a common term. Sometimes they're all divisible by six. Sometimes they're all divisible by four or eight. I got lucky. I got them all divisible by 12. So I was able to completely get rid of all the numbers and, and make a one in front. This is much easier to factor with a one in the front there. So you can just cross out the 12 now because 12 is not equal to zero. You can factor what's left, which is X and X. So you're going to have negative six, negative two equals zero. So you get X equals six. X equals two. And you're like, what the hell do these answers mean? These answers, remember, this, this is what you're chopping off. The X is the piece that you're removing. I'm going to chop off X. Uh, let's say X was six. <laughs> um, okay. My, my side is 12. I'm going to chop off six here and six here. <laughs> that doesn't leave you anything. This, this answer doesn't work. This answer is too big. The side is 12. How are you going to cut off six from the left and six from the right when it's only 12? So this, this answer doesn't work. The answer that you're going to have to do is, is two. You're going to chop off two from the left and two from the right, which will leave you with eight. And then you're going to, so you're, the dimensions of your box, look, it says find the maximum volume. you got to actually find it. Length, width, height. So the length and the width are both the same, right? They're 12, take away 2 times whatever x was. x is 2. So 12 minus 4 is 8, right? So it's going to be 8 by 8 by, this is the height. The height is 2. So your box is 8 by 8 by 2. The length, the width, and the height. So 64, 128. So the biggest box that you could possibly make would be eight feet by eight feet by two feet, the height. So this is this is feet cubed. We don't give a damn. I told you we're not we're not in the physics class. I don't care about the uh, the unit of measure. All right. So the final I'm recording the final problem. You have a box with a square base and an open top, 
and you're going to use 1,200 inches of material. That says material. I know it's hard to see. You want to find the dimensions that maximize the volume. Now, I didn't write maximize. I wrote max. Now, this, I have trouble drawing this so, so that it's easy to, to, to understand. So I'm, I'm going to try. The, the question is, where, where will the bottom of the box be? So if this is X, all right, so let, let's say this is the bottom. Then I want to, I want to make that solid. I want to try to draw this in a way that makes more sense. So let, let's say this is the bottom. So this is the bottom of the box over there. I want to make this darker. So the, the bottom, I made those lines. So the bottom is a square. Okay, and then the, the, the height is the height. The volume of a box is the length times the width times the height, right? The room that you're in has volume, has space. The bottom is a square, so the length and the width are the same. The height is not, I, this is not, it's not a cube. The base is a square. I don't know what the height is gonna be. In fact, this, this will end up being a rectangular thing. It's not, it's not going to be a perfect cube where all three sides are equal. I, I promise that. So the volume of this box is going to be x squared h. The base is x times x, and then the height is h. I don't know what else to call it. You have to call it h for height. Now, this is my max equation. I am trying to maximize the volume. The problem is I need one more equation. I have to figure out what to do with this 1,200. Now, the amount of material you have to build the box is creating all of the sides. You have four sides and you have a bottom. So you have to use that 1200 inches of material to make four sides and a bottom. So what I'm asking, what I'm really giving you when I gave you that 1200 is I'm giving you the surface area, the area of each surface, each of these individual sides has an area. Again, think of, think of the piece of paper. This is a flat object. This is not three-dimensional, this is flat. This has a surface area. It has an area on its surface that I can write. And look, I did write on it. So if you do the length times the width here, that gives you the area of this piece of paper. That is the surface, okay? So I have four sides. What is the area of each of those sides? Well, the area is the length times the width. The length is x, but the width here is h. So each of the four sides has an area of x, h. Now the bottom, the bottom side, remember, these are flat. The, the sides are flat. The area of the very bottom, because it is a square, is x squared. So the surface area is this. It is the sum of the areas of all the sides. You take the area of the four sides, which is here, and the area of the bottom, which is here, and you add them together. That has to be 1,200. This is the amount of material that I gave you. Using that material, you're going to make four sides and a bottom. This has an open top, OK? Open top. So you don't make a top, or this would be doubled. You'd have a two here, <laughs> and pray that never happens. So you have four sides and a bottom, and you're going to use the 1,200. So this equation is the one that I'm going to solve. I can't take this derivative. You have x and you have h. I have to get rid of one of them. Now I'm going to pause for a second. OK, so I needed it up a little bit. So as I was saying to the class just now, I have to take the derivative of this, but I can't do it with two different letters. So unfortunately for me, I have to take this one. Remember, this is the surface area. This is the area of the four sides and the area of the bottom, and it's 1,200 because I was given 1,200 inches of material to build my box. I have to solve this for H and put it over here. This is not going to be fun. So everybody that's not H has to go on the other side. So my first step is going to have to be to take away the X squared and knock it out. And now I'm left with 4XH. On the other side, I have 1,200. Take away X squared. Now again. I want H. Why do I want H? I want H so I can plug it in here, and then I will have all X's, and then I'm able to take a derivative. I cannot take the derivative of this yet. I have to get rid of the H. So now, what, what do you do? Well, you have 4XH. 
you have to divide by 4x. So I'm going to divide everybody by 4x. You can see this is, this is, this is not pleasant, but you have to do it. You have no choice. 1,200 divided by 4 is 300. Now, be very careful. X is on the bottom of that. You can't just move the X to the top. You're going to completely screw yourself, and you're probably going to be wrong. Minus, now, I have X squared over X, and I have a 4 on the bottom. I'm going to divide the X squared by X, right? X goes into X2. You have an X on the top, and you have a 4 on the bottom. This is what H is. And you're thinking, well, I don't want to do it that way. I mean, I could show you another way to do this afterwards. I think this is easier to do. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it in over to here. This is my max equation. So I'm going to take M, I know it's V, but I want to write M for max, X squared H, but where the H is, I'm going to put this. You'll, you'll see why I split it up. It's a little easier to do. This was H, H. H was here. I replaced it with this crap. Now I'm going to distribute one at a time. X squared times 300 over X. Now you see why I split it up. It's just a little easier to take care of. Then X squared goes over to here. You have X squared times X on top. And you have a four on the bottom. Now you can neaten that up a little bit. Divide, right? So let's do it. Let's just make this X. Yay. So this is my max equation. And I know you're thinking, what the? This is craziness. Now you have to take the derivative of this and set it equal to zero. So take the derivative of it. The derivative of 300X is 300. The derivative of X third over four is going to be 3X squared over four. And I have to set that equal to zero. I'm going to have to erase some of this to, uh, to continue this. So let me pause. Now, what you want to do is get these on opposite sides, right? So I'm going to take this and move it to that side. So add, you know, add the three X squared four over to the side that has a zero. Remember, take the derivative, set it equal to zero. So this dude moves over to the other side. I know this looks horrible, but it's, it's actually not that bad. Now, cross multiply, right? You gotta, you gotta take this dude from the bottom and move him over to the other side. Multiply both sides by four to clear that. So now you have 1200 equals three X squared. Now you're gonna divide by three. I know this is horrible. Let's see, 12 divided by three is four and I have two zeros left over. Oh my God, thank God. Let's <laughs> so get X squared equals 400. I am pretty sure that the square root of 400 is 20. I'm pretty sure 20 times 20 is uh, 400. How do you do 20 times 20? Two times two is four, and then you just add the two zeros. So yeah, it's 20. So you get 20. Oh my God, I'm almost done, believe it or not. So I got X to be 20. You can't put it up here because you don't know what the volume is. You have to put the 20 here unfortunately. So again, for space, I'm going to have to, you know, this is why I record. I'm going to have to erase this and I'm going to figure out what the H is over where I erase. Here we go. Okay. I'm going to write the formula again with what X is. X is 20. H, I don't know. X is 20. I know that I use 1200 inches of material. So this is 20 squared, which is 400. We just figured that out because I just did the square root of that. Over here, four times 20 is 80, and you have an H that I'm solving for. Subtract the 400 off of there. The problem is over, we did it. 80 H, 1200 minus 400, thank God, 800. Now divide it by 80, right? Cross out the zero, 80 divided by eight is 10. So our box is going to be 20 by 20 by 10. This is the largest I could possibly make. So that's 400 times 10 is 4,000. So the biggest 4,000 cubic inches, right? Because it's length, width, height, right? Inch, inch, inch. 
inch squared, inch cubed. Don't worry about this. I don't give a damn if it's there. I just wrote it for you. All right, you can't even see it on the screen, kind of, sort of. <laughs> I know I write on the diagonal. So you got 4,000. So the dimensions that maximize the volume, oh, actually the problem said, what are the dimensions? <laughs> there you go. Those are your dimensions. You didn't even actually have to find the area. They didn't ask you for the maximum area. They asked you for the dimension, I mean volume. They, they asked you for the dimensions that maximize the volume. They actually didn't ask you for the maximum volume. It's 4,000. They wanted the dimensions. So you would, you would actually have stopped over there. You didn't even need that. I put it there, it's 4,000. But the dimensions are 20 by 20 by 10. So the bottom, the base is gonna be 20 inches by 20 inches. And then the height of the box will be 10. All right. I know it's horrible. 